I was recently experimenting with serial communication between Arduino and UE4 and suddenly had this urge to make a fun, sensor-controlled game, something different and intuitive. Now, I remember that I had the ATXL from my previous project, which had become one of my favorite sensor, and I knew exactly what to do. I know, I know, why am I using an accelerometer when a gyro would have been a better idea? And you're right, that's the intuitive part. Now, before everything, I needed to test if it even works. So I created a demo project where I would control the pitch yaw and roll of a flat rectangular object with live inputs from the sensor, which will be in the user's hands. Serial communication was a bit tricky and I needed to open and close the port dynamically so that I can change it on the go. After a bit of tweaking, I finally got it to work. u 4 would scream to the Arduino through the open tunnel and then Arduino would bundle and send back all the data together as a response. And of course I had to unpack the data later. This happens over 1000 times under a second, giving us a latency free experience. Now before everything, I needed a system in the middle that would filter and smooth out the sensor data to give us a butter like experience. Thus I played around with some algorithms and got that done with. But even with the smoothing, this felt a bit janky and popping all around here and there. That's because the accelerometer interpreted even the slightest torque from my hand, thus the noise like output. So I had to program a noise reduction system that would allow only a certain expected range of change around the present base value. And that actually solved quite a lot of the problem. Now I was going for a game that could be controlled with hand movements, thus I needed something to attach the hardware with the user's hand instead of them just holding it. So I got a brand new latex glove and sewed the hardware on it in a more sci-fi way. Really gonna cut you off. Feel like no prayers are gonna help myself No Don't know if I should call you back You know it's getting dark inside my head I feel there's something that is stopping me now oh. And lastly I made sure to make it look cool With this sorted out, I programmed in a round object that would simulate realistic physics and bounce around like a real life ball. And although things were just starting off at this point, it was possible to balance the ball and keep it in a steady position. This, although simple, was a fun game on its own. We could spawn the ball on command and watch it interact with the cube simulating realistic physics. And man, the glove was cool AF. Cutting the finger was a good idea. It made it so much better. At this point, the base system was almost ready. Just needed to develop the full-fledged game. So from here, it was all software stuff, which is a good thing because uh, you will get some insight on my workflow in game design. Now, two things I needed to get started was a ball and a football field. I modeled the field and all its individual parts and imported it at first in UE4. What I had in mind was a 90s retro game, but with a dash of modern aesthetic as the base accent of the visual and design. So I wanted the field markings to glow brightly, which was a good decision because it made the user more aware of the structure of the field and the goalposts. I added to the field structure and design inside of UE4 and it looked really great. Now things were kinda dark and not properly visible, so I worked a lot on the lighting and backdrop to give it a more soft and moody aesthetic. A little bit of fog, some soft lighting and some glow. With this done, I experimented with the ball a lot. I made it out to glow red, tried to put an arrow on its head and a lot more, but at last settled with a red cricket ball. I brought it in with its texture done and replaced it with our initial spherical object. Now the goals are about to come. How about this? I'm going to give the player an option to pick between a ball, seems reasonable, a toy pony and a torus that would certainly help spice things up. And oh, the ball will emit a red light to make the player better understand its uh, location. The light dynamically interacting with the floor and bleeding off with the volumetrics looked so trippy. And oh, I almost forgot how painful setting up the camera was. I tried to make it react to the ball movement, but it had some serious drawbacks which I better not get into at this moment. But making it static was so much better, especially when the control for changing it was with the player. There was a total of three camera angles at this point which was custom made by me and the player could choose any one of it. There was a short moment where I experimented with some uh, wall variations around the field so that the ball doesn't fall off but later discarded the idea since it would have made the game a lot easier. Ok, 
Okay, now let's get back to the lighting and the aesthetic part. I made two studio lights, brought it into the map, it would hang above the goalpost and shed some buttery smooth green light on it. Man, the volumetrics made it look so cool and it was dynamic. Score a goal and it would change the color to red. Also, I needed uh, to destroy the old uh, ball object and spawn a new one and increment the current score which uh, brings us to the particle effect. Now, UFO provides fantastic tools for visual effects in the, inside of the game engine which helped me a lot to create the particle systems. This would spawn when the ball spawns in the middle of the field and when the player scores a goal. A little bit of explosion, some magic that added a lot of impact. Wait, it's not done yet. It took me days to get the UI up and running. Since I was making everything from scratch, it took a lot of time and effort. I needed to be able to control the sensitivity, noise reduction and all the ports from the UI. So the main menu and pause menu was to be made. If the port uh, is abandoned, I needed to close it and stop the game. The appropriate message should be displayed and the user should have the ability to open the port back again manually and that would again resume the game automatically, all while making it look good. After the pause menu was made and working, I wanted to make the main menu dynamic. I thought of having a modeled human hand floating and reacting live to the sensor so that the user can see their change to the parameters live on screen and of course I had to work on the lights to make it look beautiful. Guess what's next? The sound design. We needed spawn and score sound effects and different background music all to be custom made. After giving it some final finishing touches, it was in a presentable position. Lastly, I would color grade and tweak the look and feel of the game, and also fix some bugs. With everything done, I finally exported and built the game. Here's the showcase of the whole thing. And I try to forget all what I had But yes, my mind really gonna cut you out Yeah, but no prayers are gonna have myself No Don't know if I should call you back You know it's getting dark inside my head I feel there's something that is stopping me now Oh uh. Now, the whole project which includes the game and the Arduino code and the instructions is uploaded to Game Jolt for anyone to try it out. The link is in the description. Don't forget to check it out. 
comment down below on how this whole project was and how I can improve on this. Now, of course, this is not the end. I have plans to make the communication between the sensor and the computer completely wireless and some other crazy ideas. So I'm gonna go and work on that. Until then, take care. See you guys next time. Goodbye. My mind was full of mind.